There's a saying that if you want to get something done, ask a busy person, <laughs> and August fits that to a bill. Uh, he's the executive director of the Secular Student Alliance since 2001, and we started paying him for it in 2004, Thanks. so we still owe him. He works, he's worked for the Institute for Humanist Studies, he volunteers at Camp Quest, and he's the secretary of the Secular Coalition for America. Uh, for this campus, he actually founded the Students for Free Thought at OSU in 1997 and graduated Phi Beta Kappa with a major in psych and a minor in math and cognitive science. Um, as someone once said about August that I think is probably the most impressive thing about him, he's someone who took a part-time hobby, which is doing what all of you guys are doing now, and turned it into a full-time career. And that's incredible. I mean, you guys would not be here if it weren't for August. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for August. Um, and having been around this movement for about six, seven years now, um, I've been around a lot of atheists and a lot of leaders in the atheist movement. No one ever has anything mean to say about August. Their eyes light up whenever they mention him, which is awesome. Um, this talk is the one I probably most wish I would have been able to hear when I was in your position, when I was running a campus group at my college, because uh, I didn't know any of this stuff, and I wish I did. We were excited to get like maybe $100 for some event from our campus. Um, and August is going to tell you how you can get a lot more money from your campus because they have it to give. They give away millions of dollars in funding each year. Um, and not only from your campus, but from other students, from adults, from off-campus groups. Um, you want to make them excited about giving your campus group money, and August is going to tell you how to do it. So, August Brunsman. Thank you very much, Hemant. <clears throat> this is definitely the most... Uh, flattering introduction I have ever received. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, we've only got 20 minutes here together on this, and there's a universe. We could spend the entire weekend talking about this, but the reason we've got the 20-minute TED Talk formats is because we think the conferences are for starting conversations, not for finishing them. So if you, you know, hear something in this talk that I went uh, too fast with, then you know, you know how to find me, august at secularstudents.org, and then I'm standing right here in the red shirt, et cetera, et cetera. So, wow, I'm glad this isn't a Star Trek convention. That would be bad. Um, so anyway, yeah. So, uh, you know, with the uh, Pastafarianism being so popular within our movement, uh, pirates get a whole lot of play. I figured, you know, I've always got to be a voice for the minority. So, speaking up for the ninjas. Uh, and so, we're going to talk about how you can be strategic and not actually very ninja-like at all because you're not going to be sneaky or anything like that. Quite the opposite, really, but whatever. Had to come up with something to tie into the pirates. Um, so, we'll go ahead and, uh, and talk about this. So, um, I don't know about your experience, but I find the experience of asking people for money to be kind of scary. Uh, and I've found a few other people also find this. And I've had some people tell me that they would rather die than ask people for money. It's a scary task. I understand that. Um, and I find when you're going into facing a scary task that it's good to have a little song to sing. Those of you who know me well will know that I can't sing and that I can't really even imitate singing in any sort of like non-painful way. So instead of a song, I just have a refrain. It'll be our campus fundraising refrain. Oh, and by the way, your handout is very helpful for this. It is sort of after the ads, after Liz's hand. 33? Awesome. It's on page 33. Everything will be up here, but it moves kind of fast. It's great to have the handouts to kind of go back to. So the campus fundraising refrain. Um, Someday, those of you who are musically talented can set it to music, come up with words that rhyme, all sorts of exciting things like that. For now, we're just going to have the refrain. So one, if your group exists, it's worth funding. Two, funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Three, funding streams are like habits or relationships. And four, diversity rules. So that is a campus fundraising refrain. All right, I know you all got 1,600 on your SATs and you're all super geniuses and that you all have completely memorized the fundraising refrain and whatever. Well, we're going to go over it again and we're going to go over it together. All right, ready? Campus fundraising refrain. If your group exists, it's worth funding. Two, funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Funding streams are like habits or relationships. Diversity rules. Okay, so let's go and unpack these things. First off, if your group exists, it's worth funding. Um, so if your group is there, if it's doing anything, um, it is worth going to people and asking you to make it better. And in fact, there are entities at your campus, and we'll talk more about the details, um, that want nothing more than to fund your group. And they are there to exist to fund student activities, to make student life a rich, fulfilling experience. And they have 
millions of dollars if considered an aggregate across the entire United States to put towards that purpose. They want to give you money. Also, these off-campus groups that Liz talked about, they are amazed at what you're doing. They want you to have a voice in the classroom of today. They think this is really important. There are lots of people that want to see your group really succeed, and there are all sorts of projects that require money. JT, does your conference require money? Yes, God, yes. <laughs> FSM, yes. <laughs> Nate, where's Nate? Is Nate in here? Oh, okay. Uh, anybody from Students for Free Thought that went on the New Orleans trip here? Okay. Well, I happen to know it cost money, all right? Lots of awesome projects cost money. Uh, so you're thinking about things you want to do. Obviously, you can pay attention to all the presentations you're going to get about uh, you know, what activities you might want to engage in that could benefit from funding, bringing in speakers. I mean, the University of Miami here in Ohio brought in Christopher Hitchens. I think it cost $20,000. Um, but they were able to do it mostly with university funding. So it's all out there. But So in thinking about what you're doing and what you can do, I find the four activity areas that the Secular Student Alliance kind of breaks things up into to be really helpful for thinking about what you might want to do, activism, community, education, and service. And we can break those down later and talk about what those are in more detail. Um, if they're unclear, there's all sorts of stuff on the website. Um, I would love to go into more detail now, but I can't. Um, OK, so if your group exists, it's worth funding. All right, and we're going to go through the whole refrain one more time so we have it. OK, if your group exists, it's worth funding. Funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Funding streams are like habits or relationships. Diversity rules. OK, so funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. OK, so there's a lot of different potential organizations and people. There's these off-campus groups. You could ask for money from national organizations, from your student activities board, from departments at your university, from alumni. It's all very complicated and kind of scary. And I know when I'm doing something scary, even if I already have a song, I find that a matrix can be helpful. No, not that kind of matrix. This kind of matrix. Uh, so you've got this little matrix here. Uh, let me kind of unpack the various moving parts of it. And then, um, and then we can kind of dig into the, the, the details. So first off, on the x-axis there at the bottom on your handouts, um, startup cost. So this is the amount of effort you have to put in in order to get this funding stream going for the first time. So if it is, say, getting funding from your activities board, you have to learn how to get funding from your activities board. Go talk to the people, read the literature on the website, fill out the form, all of that. Um, if you are getting funding from alumni, you need to find out who the alumni of your school who might be sympathetic um, are to talk to them and ask them for money. Um, or you might need to um, you know, get a membership system started. You might need to decide how that is going to work and if you're going to have a membership system. So that's the startup cost uh, going from zero, easy, no startup cost. You'll see you, you are there. No startup cost to that. Self, can I have 20 bucks to pay for pizza for the meeting? Yes, self, you can. Uh, very, very low startup cost at any rate. Um, but, and then moving on over towards 10. So the Y axis has return on investment after startup costs. So after you've gone and filled out the paperwork the first time and learned how to do it, after you've built the relationship with some of your alumni, um, after you've gone and set up the membership system, how much money is that stream likely to produce uh, on a recurring basis over time? Um, and so the higher that is, the more money you're going to get for less effort after you've paid the startup cost. So. We want to avoid things marked by the international sign for avoidance, the, the frowny red star um, that are over uh, in that lower right-hand corner um, that have a high startup cost and low revenue. And we want to try to get to things uh, that are near the international sign for goodness, uh, the green star with the smiley, uh, which is high return on investment per effort after you've paid the startup cost. So. Um, looking over all these kinds of different things, you know, you, member fees, events, participants, partners, national organizations, op campus organizations, alumni, individuals, departments. Are there any of those that are not clear? Or that you'd like me to explain what I mean by like partners or? You're all completely clear on them. Okay. Huh? Partners. Partners. Okay. So let's say you want to have a debate between um, Christopher Hitchens and, um, oh, and Coulter. Um, <laughs> and so um, 
So you, you are responsible probably for going and getting Christopher Hitchens and paying for him and working with his agent, blah, blah, blah. But maybe you're like, hey, Campus Republicans or Campus Crusade for Christ, whatever. Um, how do you feel about spending your money to bring in Ann Coulter? Because we would rather die than do... Anyway, no, I don't know. Um, and anyway, and the group was like, wow, Ann Coulter, all right. Um, and they raise a bunch of money, and they bring in Ann Coulter, and you bring in uh, Christopher Hitchens. That's, so that's what I mean by partners. And that could be less... I, 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 it could also be much more... I don't know, a much more friendly relationship, like say the New Orleans trips down there to, to work on the rebuilding with, uh, with a, a, a campus Christian group. Um, that'd be considerably less antagonistic kind of thing. But I mean, it, it's never actually all that antagonistic. It's kind of interesting. Um, people badmouth debates as like, oh, they're very confrontational and they, you know, they encourage uh, divisiveness. Um, but a curious thing happens with the debate, which is that you have to work with people who you disagree with in order to accomplish a shared goal, which is the debate, uh, which I've always thought is kind of an interesting side to debates. Um, so, so I offer this, uh, okay, so partners, um, I hope that's clear now. Are there any others that are, yeah? Uh, what are the difference between members, participants, and individuals? Sure. Um, so, oh yeah, I should relabel the individuals category. Um, okay, so member fees would be um, like you charge $5 to be a member. When anybody wants to come in and be a voting member of your group, they have to fill a little card or a web form or something and give you $5 or $20 or whatever you decide it is. Um, participants are, um, say, uh, if you are at your, um, your Ann Coulter uh, Hitchens debate, uh, you charge $5 at the door. Um, so those are people that are participating in the event. Uh, and then individuals, uh, that really maybe should say off-campus individuals, but I guess it wouldn't even necessarily have to be off-campus individuals. Um, individuals are just like random woman who you met at your mother's Christmas party for her work who is a freaking rabid atheist and loves your group and wants to give you money. Um, or however you happen to meet that person, like they came to one of your, they came to your Ann Coulter Hitchens debate, uh, or or whatever, uh, and they came up to you and talked to you afterwards at your table, and was, and they told you they were great, and then you were like, if you think we're great, how would you feel about a pledge of a hundred dollars to the secular students at whatever university this year? And they're like, oh wow, that sounds awesome. Here's a check. Uh, so which sounds kind of crazy, but it works uh, sometimes. Uh, so, so that's the difference between those. Any of the others? Okay. Um, so, so anyway, this is a good way to think about your different partners. Uh, when you're thinking about what your partners want, um, obviously some of them, like off-campus groups, are already so aligned with your mission that basically they just want you to go and be active. Um, thinking about other funding sources, like especially departments and, um, and, and like student activities funds, thinking about what it is that speaks to them is really, really important. I encourage you not to let those resources go at all. Those are some of your most important resources to get access to um, because they have a lot of money and it's really easy to get. Um, and so, but thinking about what they want, because they don't particularly care about secularism, um, they are interested in having an, a rich, exciting campus life for their students to participate in. So, um, university funding boards love diversity, uh, and you happen to be a minority. Um, there's an excellent article, and on the the back of your handout, um, there's uh, not the handout, the back of my page. It's on the opposite of my page. Uh, it's in blue. It's the Goodman and Mueller article. Uh, the the citation there. The little link on the. The first page, is, it doesn't work anymore because they took the article down from public viewing. Uh, so just ask me if you want to get a hold of the article or search for it by name. Um, but it is all about how uh, atheist students are an underserved minority on college campuses in the United States. Um, so uh, that is a really useful resource for you, an academic paper in a peer-reviewed journal that you can go and send to your student senate or whoever it is uh, to let them know that yes, you're a legitimate minority and your de voice uh, deserves to be heard on campus. Um, whenever you're applying for a project, make sure to obviously include the particulars of why your project has value, but also explain why your group has value every single time. Uh, because the people who make the decisions may have changed uh, on that particular funding board, even within a semester. Um, or it might get shunted to a different committee or something like that. So make sure your proposals always talk about why your group is valuable. So definitely in terms of adding diversity to campus. And then there's another sort of diversity which you also add, which is you add to the 
diversity of the, the marketplace of ideas on campus. Um, it's true that a lot of our values overlap quite a bit with values that the university already holds, like evidence-based decision making, um, but it is the case that we are frequently more willing to offer a critical voice of ideas that other people hold dearly when we think they don't make sense. Uh, and in that way, we are important to the intellectual diversity of the campus. Um, so make sure that you make that case as well to your funding board. So, funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Um, so the campus fundraising refrain, I'll just go through it real fast. Um, so if your group exists, it's worth funding. Funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Funding streams are like habits or relationships and diversity rules. So we're going to hit funding streams are like habits or relationships and diversity rules all in one handy slide. So um, this slide will be way easier to read in your proceedings than it's going to be to read on the screen here. But so basically what's going on with this slide uh, is that up at the top um, we've got uh, in the columns uh, we have different events that your group might put on. So um, there's Punch and Pie, bringing Hemet to come speak for your group, a New Orleans service trip, Susan Jacoby speaking at your campus. I wish that I had thought of this, the Ann Coulter thing earlier, but for now it's, it's Ion Hersia Lee versus William Lane Craig, which would also be kind of awesome, um, uh, having a debate. So, and then in the reddish column up, at, or I'm sorry, reddish row up at the top, I've given kind of like, just for the sake of discussion, uh, costs for these things. Uh, and we'll kind of go over those one by one. And then the purple columns um, are different funding streams that we've talked about. So they go from you, other leaders, membership, nationals, uh, swag sale, um, off-campus groups, uh, participants, partners, alumni, activity funds, and departments. So we use our little slider here to focus on one at a time. So you want to have your first meeting. You want punch and pie because you think more people will show up um, and you don't plan ahead very much and you realize when the pizza delivery guy comes or the punch and pie delivery guy, how cool would that be, uh, comes uh, that you know, you're just going to have to, you know, you're going to have to open your wallet up and hand over the money uh, to the guy and that's okay. I, I think that is perfectly fine behavior. Uh, obviously we all have different levels of capacity when it comes to offering a little bit of financial support to our group, um, but I think that putting a little bit of your own money in the game definitely makes the group more valuable to you psychologically. Um, and at the same time though, the, the downside obviously is sustainability. Uh, you cannot continue to fund everything when uh, Christopher Hitchens wants $20,000 to, uh, to come in and speak. I'm betting most of you would probably bulk at that. Uh, I, know, I know I would. Uh, so, uh, but in this case, that was enough. So that goes well. You get some people, um, and you all get talking, and you're like, hey, it would be great to have Hemet come and speak on campus. And uh, you guys call up Liz, and you're like, oh, we'd like to have Hemet. And Liz says, oh, that's fine. Um, you know, it'll cost this much to fly there, and we can kick in a little bit of support. Um, but, you know, overall, it's going to be $500. Well, you really want to make this happen, so you still are willing to kick in 50 But this time, you tell your fellow officers, hey, um, I'm kicking in 50 Would anybody be willing to kick in some money to help make this happen? And another one of your officers says, sure, I'll do 25 um, and then you've also started a membership system. So uh, you've got a little bit of money from your membership system. You can get $50 from that. Um, when you called up Liz to talk about get, bringing him in, you asked Liz, hey, is there any way the SSA can help with the bill on bringing him in? And Liz goes and looks at the budget and talks to me. Um, actually, she wouldn't need to for this particular case, but it doesn't matter. Um, whatever. She, uh, she says, oh, yeah, sure, we could do $200 um, or, or whatever it might happen to be. It's $200 in this case. Um, so you're going to get $200 from us, uh, from a national organization. Uh, you decide to have a bake sale, and you go and you go to their friends, you buy a bunch of baking ingredients, and you bake things, and you sell them, and people buy them. And then when you realize how much you paid to like rent the table and to buy all the flour and all of that, that you've made a whopping $10. <laughs> uh, so beware bake sales. Um, you find your off-campus group nearby, um, you ask them for money, and they're like, oh, sure, kid, we'll throw you $65 to bring in this hermit Mahita guy. That sounds fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so they do that. Uh, and then you talk to your campus activities board, and um, you ask them for money, and they say, oh, sure, sure 100 bucks. that sounds great. Why not? So that happens, and you get that funded. All right. 
So that hymn it comes, you're all inspired. Uh, it's fantastic. Peace breaks out in the Middle East. Awesome. Uh, so next you decide, oh, well, let's go have a service trip over our spring break for, uh, for, for, to New Orleans. And you run the numbers and you're like, wow, that's going to be really expensive. It's going to cost $1,900 between like, all the gas and the hotels and uh, everything involved. So um, again, you know, uh, well, I'll just focus on the new ones here. Uh, or the ones that change significantly. You go down in this case, which is a good thing because you're going to run out of money. Um, but you know, that other person that gave 25 before, they're like, oh yeah, I guess I could throw in 25 again. Your membership maybe has grown a little bit, so you have a little bit more money in that kitty, you're throwing in 200. Uh, you fill out a SSA project grant application, and we decide to kick 100 bucks your way. Um, you do a swag sale, this time you do it differently. You contact the Richard Dawkins Foundation and say, hey, can we sell all your cool pens and stuff on consignment? And they say, oh yeah. So they send you a bunch of stuff, you sell it on the table, goes like hotcakes, you ship back what you don't sell, you keep the profits. So now you earned 150 bucks instead of 10, and you didn't have to get all messy. Um, and so uh, the off-campus group you worked with last time, they were like, wow, that guy was really good. Um, yes, we would support this, here's $100. The participants, you ask the people who are going down to New Orleans, like, we know you're college students, but um, do you think you could pony up $100 each to make this very long trip down there? Uh, and they do that. So 10 of them are going, that's 1000 bucks. Um, you find an alumni member, maybe if your group is old, uh, you know, there's somebody who's already an alumni of your group in particular, that is probably going to be a really good resource. Um, and we'll just stick with that. In theory, you could also find other alumni of your school who are sympathetic. It might be more difficult to connect with them. Uh, in the first place. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, sure, I'll give you a hundred bucks and I'll talk to some other people and uh, see what they say. But he never gets back to you after the hundred bucks. Well, not never. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the activities fund is uh, willing to, to pitch in a little bit too, two hundred dollars. So from all these different sources, you have got the money for your New Orleans trip and that happens. And then you decide, oh well, we did that, that was great, let's bring in Susan Jacoby to tell us why it's an evil sin to use the word folks. And uh, and so you, this time, only have to kick in 10 bucks. Your membership has grown. You're up to 250. Um, national, you call up SSA, and you say, hey, we've got a track record. We brought in Hemet. We went to New Orleans. Can we have money to do this? And SSA says, sure, we'll give you $300 to help with this. Your off-campus group, there's somebody in it who's a freaking Susan Jacoby crazy fan and decides that, yes, they would love to fund this, and they're going to give you $540 because they trust you and they know you in addition to the fact that they're a Susan Jacoby fan. Um, participants don't have to pay anything this time, open to the public. Um, but the, um, the partners, oh, let's say you go to the history club and you're like, Susan Jacoby wrote this authoritative work on the history of freethinkers in the United States. Isn't that amazing? And they say, wow, we never heard of that. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, we'd like to help fund it. They give you $400. That alumni guy who you got the $100 from earlier, he comes back to you and he says, hey, I found 10 other alums and they would really love to help you out. Um, I talked to all of them, and here's $500 that they gave me. Um, so you've got that going for you now. And you've talked to your activities fund. They give you money, um, $2,500 in this case, because they know you have a track record and that you're reliable. Um, and then you go to the history department and explain what you said to the history club, um, and they give you $500. So you're, you're building all these different relationships, and then um, moving on to the, the pinnacle, the Ion Hersey Ali versus William Lane Craig for the heavyweight title, um, you know, even though this event is going to cost $25,000 to put on, um, you end up paying nothing. Your other leaders end up paying nothing. Your membership kitty only has to have $150 taken out of it. Um, you call up Debbie and talk to them about their grant program. You guys have a grant program, right? Yes. And she's like, oh yeah, we would love to help fund that. Uh, and you call up Liz too, and together we're giving you $500. Um, you do the swag sale. This time you, you, know, you also contact Evolve Fish and get a whole bunch of like fine spaghetti monster emblems and all that, and an even more diverse set of offerings than you had last time, all still sold on consignment. You make $250. That off-campus group um, thinks this is an amazing idea and you did well with all of their money in the past, $1,000. Um, the participants you charge for admission, that ends up being $2,600. Um, and, and you, you, oh, so the partners, this actually comes to be huge. So you don't want to pay for William Lane Craig, right? You want Campus Crusade to pay for William Lane Craig. So you ask them and they're like, wow, we can't think of anything better to spend our money on than William Lane Craig. <laughs> so they put in, uh, they put in $12,500. Um, and you know, and the alumni has grown to um, 1,500 and the activities fund really knows you well. You get 5,000 from them and maybe not the history department this time, but the philosophy department. Um, you know, you talk them into giving you 1,500. So, through all of this, 
Um, you have built up a diversity of funding sources, which helps you build credibility to your other new funding sources, uh, and means that you can drop out old funding sources without it wrecking your really awesome run and your budget. Um, so, so that. So those two things, funding streams are like habits, because as you build habits or relationships with funders and you produce results, they end up being really impressed and want to give to you again. And also diversity rules both because um, <laughs> past funding spawns more funding from new sources and funders love it when you have a matching grant of some kind. If, if you're like, oh, we already raised $500 from the Secular Student Alliance, would you, history department, be willing to throw in another $500? They're impressed to see that you're not coming to them for your sole source of funding. So, um, and then it provides protection for the future. So uh, with that, I am way over time, but the campus fundraising refrain, let's do it together one more time. Okay, if your group exists, it's worth funding. Funding is about partnering. Understand what your partners want. Funding streams are like habits or relationships. Diversity rules. Thank you very much. <laughs>